Hey, hey, welcome back everybody. We're just out here in the shop doing a little work on a Sunday and uh, yeah, fishing up these plug wires. So I wanted to uh, point a few things out here. This is the last one. And uh, get this to focus. You know, they make that little crimp tool. Oh, it's really gonna be really hard to get this focused. There it goes. All right, they make that little crimp tool. Uh, it comes with the the plug wire kits from MSD, and uh, I always find myself having to adjust the uh, the crimp here with a pair of pliers. But it really does help get uh, those corners kind of pulled in, so you don't end up with uh, kind of a weird crimp down here on the the insulation. So that's cool. Um, I always try to make sure that the conductor wire is pinched in there really good and uh, kind of just push that in there with a screwdriver and then give it an extra squeeze with a pair of pliers uh, to get that in there. Somewhere someone probably makes a tool to straighten these boots out and help push that uh, that wire through there but I, I, ha I don't know where that is. I don't have one if they do exist. Um, I just grease this thing up with some WD-40 and uh, push it through. So it takes a little bit of effort but seems to turn out when we're done. So uh, I'm going to put this one on. We'll take a look at how the finished product turned out. All right, so there's how the uh, driver's side turned out. Not too bad. I'll uh, put a couple zip ties on there to kind of lay those in finally. Um, probably one like that, one something like that. Um, and the passenger side, same kind of deal. I just kind of play around until I get them looking where I, I feel like they're tucked up and out of the way and uh, where I can put a couple zip ties on to kind of hold them together without them getting in the way of other stuff and then uh, lace them through the uh, little tie down brackets that I made on the back there. So I probably made those 15 years ago. <laughs> I've had those on everything from a pavement modified to a sprint car. So pretty uh, long-standing piece of, of reuse that we don't awfully, often see around here anymore. But uh, anyhow, that's about done. I did get the uh, cast iron distributor gear. I'll pull that back out, swap that gear, and uh, throw that all back together. But this is uh, finished up so we can put our, uh, well, I guess we gotta wait till we got in the car and we put the coil wire on to uh, put the plug wire guard on there. Um, but otherwise, this guy's ready to go. Got some breather vents for it. And um, yeah, we're there. So finally done after a long uh, wait for getting parts and uh, finding the days when it's not frigid out here to uh, be able to get out here and work on it. So we got a couple of our patio heaters going right now. Barbara and the mother-in-law are back here patching up a windshield avoiding the insurance claim for repaired windshields. <laughs> Barbara's gotten pretty good at that. She uh, drives a Jeep, which is known for uh, chips in the windshield. So anyhow, there she is. The open motor is ready to go. We'll uh, button this one up, tighten up all of our spark plugs, and we're ready to go to the dyno. You know, sometimes it's the simple things that are really nice. Um, MSD gives you this little tool with uh, these tiny little plastic bands to mark your plug wires. You just kind of sit that on the wire and slide the number up on there just like that. Pretty cool, huh? Alright, so out with the old, in with the new. There's our our uh, bronze gear that came on it. Here's our new cast iron gear and there's uh, the distributor by the way. There's your flat that drives the oil pump if you've never seen one of these apart before. Uh, there's two o-rings that go right here to seal up some oil galleries in the block. Those will be the last thing we put on. I'll take that back. Those are the second to last thing to put on. Uh, we'll put those on then we'll lube this all up with some assembly lube which will be the last thing we put on. So I don't have enough hands to uh, do all this at the end uh, video at the same time. So uh, Gonna put this guy on right here with one of these quick snaps. Here we go. All right, there we go. Uh, gear is installed. 
the uh, O-rings are installed, and then this is the lubricant that MSD provides. It's a uh, Lucas brand product. Uh, so I'm going to take this over the engine. Again, I'm going to be short some hands here. Um, I'll just lube this up really good, spread it around down there, and uh, we'll realign everything. Our oil pump drive, I, I don't, I tried not to anyway, move the, uh, the axle in here very much. So I think we should still be pretty close, but uh, we, we may have to adjust this a little bit to get it lined back up with where the oil pump was when it came out of the engine. So uh, anyway, here we go. All right, here we go. Get this nice and lubed up. There's all sorts of warning labels on this package of lubricant about getting it on your skin and getting it in your eyes. So don't put uh, installation lubricant in your eyes, kids. Bad for you. All right. Honestly, don't think I could get more of that on there if I wanted to. So, set this down. Pick this up. And I believe I had it. About right there. No, this must have moved because it's got to be pointed towards cylinder number one. Close there. I'm gonna wipe my hands off. And step back for a second, wipe up any messes I've made. Like that one and that one. Alright, let me get a fresh rag. I think the body, well, the body doesn't really matter so much. It's, well, I guess it does if I want the gear lined up still. So I think the body was turned a little more like that. So let's try. There we go. Now we're now down on the gear. Yeah, that ought to work. We're a little bit north of number one, but I think I, I want it more that way anyhow just to keep the, uh, the wiring and everything up out of the way. So there we go. We can put our clamp back on and uh, put our cap together. And we'll, uh, we'll set the timing once we get on the dyno. <clears throat> so I used to joke when non-racing people would ask me about our sprint car engines. They'd say, well, what kind of engine is it? And, you know, they expect you, oh, it's a 400 Chevy out of a pickup truck. And it's like, no, it's nothing like that. But I would say that this, uh, this distributor or magneto hold down clamp was the only stock component on the whole engine. People get a kick out of that kind of stuff. Although you could probably say if you run these kind of valve covers that these things are stock too because I actually used to work for the guy that designed those. Let me get a ratcheting wrench for that. All right, let's try this again. Yeah, these distributor hold down clamps don't need to be super tight. It's got quite a bit of leverage on here. I could probably have gone with a shorter stud, but oh well. Here we go. So I'll just get it. All right, there it moves. About a quarter turn. There it doesn't move. Good. All right. Wipe the excess WD-40 off of our cap from when we were putting the wires on. And then number one is marked, so we know that goes that way. See, we're gonna be a little late there. Let's loosen this up a little bit. Cause 
because we know this is that top dead center for number one. We know that's number one. So here, I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. <clears throat> so if we look down at the rotor, we got our cap, all right? I got number one marked here. We know the engine is top dead center number one. And we know that that bolt right there has to line up with that groove right there in the side of the distributor. So when I line all that up, kind of like that, there we go, that should be firing in on number one right there. <clears throat> so that'll at least get us so that it'll start on the dyno and we can set it with a timing light. You don't get the ways of making it more accurate than that like you do with a points ignition where you can put a piece of cellophane or something in there and, and set it exactly uh, where the points open you know that's where it's firing so just to do the rough set on a, a magneto for the sprint car we'd do it with a cellophane wrapper off a pack of cigarettes because it was nice and thin and it would fit just in the points there tight enough that it would hold itself closed all right let's see one so this is number two that's our crossover Seven. Seven. Three. One, eight, four, three. That one. Five. One, eight, four, three, six, five. One, eight, four, three. Nine. I don't know where nine goes. That must be a six. Here we go. Eight. Each come up this way. I just kind of keep eyeballing these to make them as clean as I can. That must be number one. Yep. Also took the brunt of our assembly lube. There we go. Looks good. All right, that's that. Um, I do have to make some fuel hoses and some stuff. These breathers did just come in um, this morning, so I gotta go pick those up tomorrow. And uh, yeah, I'll fill it with oil, put an oil filter on it. It'll be good to go. I'm not gonna lie. I do miss the smell of some VR1. Open motors. Well, I'm just wrapping up here at the end of the night, putting oil in the engine here, and uh, you know, kind of thinking through what the next steps are going to be to make sure we get everything ready, start getting some spares around. And uh, I realized that we are coming up, or we just passed actually, the uh, the one year anniversary of when we committed uh, to presenting this channel and really uh, making this a thing. So um, the original Road to Bristol series from last year, probably a lot better content than we've been able to provide this year just due to other life stuff going on. But uh, that was really kind of the turning point of when we said we wanted to do this and um, we started thinking about the kind of content we wanted to generate uh, and bring to you guys and I, I think we've been true to that and uh, I, I'm proud with what we've got here so far um, you know I, I obviously the the main focus of racing is still racing so I don't want to get too caught up in, in not presenting that stuff because that that's the key here is still to create a competitive race team but um, the YouTube thing has been good and uh, you know I know there's been a, a big uh, influx of 
people starting the the YouTube stuff, and, and I support that. I, I think this is the future of what uh, we need to be thinking about for entertainment and, and how to get, uh, you know, what people watch into the, the hands of, of the real people that are out there and, and not the garbage you see on cable television. So um, I encourage anybody that's thinking about doing this to do it. It's not easy. Trust me. <laughs> I've been making videos for uh, over eight years now and they were really bad for a long time and they're, they're still not as good as I'd like them to be. But uh, don't get discouraged. This stuff is, is not easy. Um, I think you see a lot of guys that think they can just pick up a camera and, and do it, and it's it's hard. Um, you know, I'm I'm willing to help anybody that's that's got questions about that kind of stuff. Uh, I've learned a lot about video editing and, and everything. You guys feel free to drop me a line if you got questions. I'm I'm willing to help with that stuff because, like I said, I think it's important uh, to grow the the sport and to get the the message into the hands of the grassroots people. Uh, and the real people out here doing real things like building race cars and going to the racetrack and, and making memories. So, uh, you know, all the all the props in the world to people that think that they're willing to uh, do any of those things individually or together. <laughs> Racing is hard. Building cars is hard. Putting content on YouTube is hard. And uh, I commend you guys that are out here doing it. So, I don't know, just some thoughts I had. Uh, while well, I'm thinking about what we got to do and, and really thinking about where I want to go with, uh, with what we're doing with the channel and uh, how we make content. So uh, I have picked up a better computer. I'm able to do more editing and uh, I want to learn a few things to get better at some of this stuff. So I'm going to do that. Um, we are going to start putting a little bit of effort into merchandise. Um, got some t-shirt designs coming out. We'll, uh, we'll have those for sale soon. Uh, less stuff, I think, of the race car and, and you know, less stuff branded with my name, more stuff branded as the channel, I think, is where I want to go with that. Uh, it's not about me. It's about everybody that's here and about everybody that's watching in the community. So uh, I want to kind of brand that a little bit more and go that way. But uh, it's going to take some time. i got a little bit of work to do, get some of that stuff going. And uh, curious to see what you guys think. We, uh, we don't want to go down the avenue of Patreon and more uh, subscriber content. That's, that's not kind of the vibe I want to have. Um, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. People that do that, that's, that's cool. Do, you do you, man. I'm, uh, I'm here just to say that that's not where I want to go. I want content to be free to everybody um, not looking to really make money doing this um, if it comes along that's great if if not um that's not the focus the focus isn't to uh, to bankroll myself or the race team or anything like that um, we just want to have fun doing this and, and make some videos and bring you guys along for what we do kind of set the tone that uh, this is real america this is the real things that we do and uh, hopefully people enjoy it so anyhow a little bit of rambling here in the middle of the day while i'm out here just thinking and uh working on the engine so i don't know you guys let me know what you think what do you want to see from us you, you want us to uh provide different content or provide different merchandise well i'm, I'm thinking some t-shirts that are branded high in the dirt Maybe some hats. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, next up, fuel pressure regulator and inlet line. So I got the inlet line all flushed and cleaned. Uh, we need to install our fuel pressure regulator to one end of these. So we quit running a regulator when we went to the Willys carburetor uh, because they don't run one, right? You run deadheaded right off of the pump. Uh, the Super Bowl kind of regulates the flow for you. This thing uh, you need with a traditional needle and seat. So uh, I'm going to put this all uh, back on here. And uh, I got kind of a slick way I'm going to do it. So uh, good news, I didn't realize, but this does come with a block uh, for the outlet, which we need. Um, this will be on the end of the fuel line. So 
the inlet is, is already in the end of the circuit. Uh, the return, we, uh, we have a fitting for already, and the plumbing in the car will match up to that. So the return line will go in here. What we're going to do is this is an 8 a.m. nut. This is an 8 a.m. T. So we're going to thread that up because those are port fittings on there. We're going to thread that nut on here, put an O-ring on, and then thread the, uh, the fuel pressure regulator right on the end of this, tighten down with the nut. And uh, we'll be able to not only clock that where we want it, but uh, get a good seal on there without any extra fittings. So I hate any time you have to adapt a fitting to a fitting to something else. It's just more complexity, uh, more opportunity to leak. So uh, I'm going to give this a try. I think this will work out pretty well. So I've been bitten by some of these before, but I, I'm pretty confident this one's going to work. So let's give her a whirl. All right, well, I got the... Uh, the first port fitting on there, I'll put a cap on that, but we do have kind of a fail here. Um, you can see how deep, maybe you can't see, I don't know if it'll focus on that, but how deep the shoulder is there where this O-ring uh, sits, right? It's, it's cut pretty deep in there. Um, and when you put this nut on, there's really not, I don't know if you can see that or not, there's not a lot of thread left there. so. Uh, by the time you had that threaded up, it would really only catch about one thread. I'm not good with that with aluminum. Um, I'm not ready to give up on this, though. So what we can do here is we'll replace this T with, uh, with one that they call a bulkhead fitting, and this end is extended, uh, and then it's still threaded for the, uh, the 8 a.m. nut. So uh, I think once I have all that together, this will... Uh, provide enough depth in there, you'll have a lot of thread engagement, and then you'll still be able to put that nut uh, against the O-ring, right, the, the face of that O-ring there to, to seal that up. So um, I'm going to kind of get that centered in there so you can see th that's how that will, uh, will go. I think there's even a, a steel washer that some of the steel port fittings have. I'll see if I can't scam one of those, and uh, I think that'll go together nicely. So Kind of a bummer that didn't work out quite the the home run that I thought it was going to be. But like I said, I'm not ready to give up. I think we've, we've got a way to make this work out. It's just going to require me to order another fitting. So it'll take a minute to play around with that. Well, anyway, there's the look we were kind of going for. Uh, fuel pressure regulator right there. It still leaves room to uh, attach these, you know, your carburetor float bowls right here. So there's still plenty of wrench clearance to get in there and everything. Um, yeah, I think that, that bulkhead style fitting there will solve that problem. Uh, and then we also have our fuel pressure, whoops, fuel pressure uh, tap right there for the uh, fuel pressure gauge. So we'll use that to set it. We're all good to go. But uh, yeah, I think we're going to end this one here. It's... Uh, Getting kind of cold out here. I think we run out of propane for the heaters. So, um, just want to say thanks for everybody that's uh, been tagging along with us here, and um, you know, good luck to the uh, the teams that all went down to East Bay. Uh, be careful down there. Hope you guys wish you guys good luck, and uh, hope for a safe return to everybody. You don't want to tear up your car the first race of the season. Ask me how I know. But uh, I think we got some good work done in here today. A little bit slower than usual, but that's all right too. Um, thanks to everybody that's kind of wished that uh, we weren't going to Bristol. I, I know you guys have our, our best uh, intentions in mind, but uh, we kind of have a grudge to settle here and looking to get back there and see what we can do. So, uh, like I said, I appreciate it. I know you guys are just trying to look out, but we got to get some things done. So, everything's shaping up pretty good here. Car's pretty much ready to go. Uh, just got to get this engine tuned up and uh, get her in the car. So. We'll uh, catch you on the next one.